Tonight, MP Marlene Malahu Fort visits the Charles Gordon Market in Montego Bay in an effort to improve conditions for vendors. I will be advocating for new market infrastructure for St. James. Farmers in Danvers Penn, Western St. Thomas express concerns about the possibility of losing their livelihoods due to severe drought conditions. Still tonight, Prime Minister commissions into service a new bridge in Bowden Hill, St. Andrew that will benefit hundreds of residents in the rural community and adjoining areas. And 5,000 KN95 masks and 100 face shields were presented to the South Regional Health Organization from the Global Services Sector Association of Jamaica to help protect healthcare workers in the fight against COVID-19. Good evening. In an effort to assist in improving conditions for vendors at the Charles Gordon Market in Montego Bay, St. James, the Member of Parliament for the area, Marlene Malahu Fort, visited the market to assess the situation. More in this story with Colleen May. Member of Parliament for West Central St. James, Marlene Malahu Fort, toured the Charles Garden Market in Montego Bay earlier today in an effort to assist in improving conditions for vendors that use the market space. In speaking with our news team, Malahu Fort shared mixed feelings in relation to the condition of space and the many complaints from vendors. I have mixed feelings as I walk the market this morning. Um, I've been hearing a lot of complaints from the vendors. There is a culture around the market which is very different from the physical infrastructure of the market. The conditions are desperately in need of improvement even though, even though they have come a long way in the last four, four and a half years. Yes, it has come a um, Still has a long way to go. There are, there are common cries right across. They are concerned about the opening hours, about those who are overseeing the market favoritism they are saying being shown. I think there's general need for a cleaning, the roadways, facilities to deal with those who travel from the breadbasket parish and those who need accommodation, um, you know, in and around the market. Malahu Ford also said that in spite of the improvements made to the market, there is much more needed to be done. I think it is clear that something has to be done urgently in spite of all of the improvements that have been made. The councillor is here and I am going to be speaking with him further. I'm going to be speaking with the mayor and I'm going to be following up with the Minister of Local Government, the Honourable Desmond Mackenzie. I will be advocating for new market infrastructure for St. James, urgently and desperately needed, and it must take into account the best of the market culture. And we have to help those who live around the market, who send their children from what they make in the market to have a better life. You know, this is a special place, and I think it's time we give due regard to those who feed us and counsel for the Spring Gardens Division, Dwayne Crawford, says that work in the market have come a far way. I just came out to hear some of the concerns and some of the views and of course some of the compliments for what the government has done thus far. We've come a far way. We know we still have a far way to go, but the government is, is moving to, to make those changes. So the vendors have shared some concerns and I'm here to hear them to report them back to, 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 to my superiors at the Parish Council. Reporting from Mellow TV News, I'm Colleen May. Still making news tonight, farmers in Danvers Pen in Western St. Thomas are concerned about the possibility of losing their livelihoods due to severe drought conditions. Well, if we get some support with, with, from them with, with chemical and things, you know, we, we go and do what we can do, you know, because enough island then can't plow. Like with tractor, we'd have to and plow it, but enough island then can't really plow, so like fertilizer and spray, we would have want from them chemical like we burn grass, and most of that we would have want. To the minister, we, we said we must produce more, but we need help. 
because we have water shortages. So, and I can't afford to give the cow them water every day because I don't have the money to buy the gas to pick the vehicle to transport the water every day. So I need help to help with my animals. There's 19 of them I have. So you know it takes a lot of water. Small poultry farmers also expressed that since the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a lack of sales due to the outsourcing by larger farmers. Lately with the crisis, we have a lot of egg never move because them come with that them come with some cheap egg because the hotel farmer them them just supply hotel alone your egg can't move because the big farmer come in with for them egg and spoil up the market in a Jamaica enough people don't go in a farming because even while there enough people have chicken for them fridge and it's spoiled them have to kill all them layers, them have to kill some of them birds, they cannot feed them. So I think that is the problem. And right now, the, the consequence of the COVID thing, well, yeah, I think farmers yeah, should have more outstanding in Jamaica. We got through and try to get the sales of the eggs them by distributing them to other places that we never used to supply. Because the places them that we used to supply, they don't take that amount of egg no more. So you have to look by yeah. And the egg prices go down, and you have to actually go down with them. And you have to pay the same price for the feeding, and the feeding don't cut or drop. So it affects the farmers, small farmer, a whole lot. Still making news tonight, the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is probing Wednesday afternoon's fatal police shooting of a man from Trelawney who was said to be mentally challenged. Now the deceased has been identified as Huron Hyde, 37, of Bounty Hall in Trelawney. Reports are that late Wednesday afternoon, the police were on patrol in Bounty Hall when they saw Hyde brandishing a firearm. He reportedly pointed the gun at the police party and opened fire, forcing the law enforcement officers to scramble for cover. The police returned the fire and Hyde was shot. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. A handgun was reportedly recovered from his body. Meanwhile, the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, says it is aware of a video being circulated online showing a civilian and members of the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, involved in a physical altercation. The video emerged online yesterday evening showing a soldier attempting to apprehend a man before a physical struggle ensues as the man appears to put up a resistance. The tussle between the pair intensifies to the point where the soldier falls to the ground before another soldier intervenes and appears to kick the civilian, who is later instructed to lay on the ground. It is unclear where the video was captured. Indicom, while saying that it has seen the video, also expressed that they are unable to open an investigation into the matter as no one has come forward to make a formal complaint. Indicom says any of the involved persons that would like to contact them can do so via WhatsApp at 876-553-5555 or call 876-968-8875 to report the incident. Now, in a news update, investigators attached to the Major Investigation Division, MID, have made a breakthrough into the identities of two men who were fatally shot by armed men while traveling in a motor vehicle along Claude Clark Avenue from the direction of Flanker in St. James yesterday. The police have given the identities of the men as Kemar Hosted of Norwood and Michael Hill, customer service rep from Old Harbor, who was staying in the retirement community up to the time of his death. In other news tonight, the president of the People's National Party, Dr. Peter Phillips, has declared that the party is committed and ready to sit as a genuine partner with all stakeholders, including the church, private sector, trade union, civil society, and the government in the fight against crime and violence. The opposition leader further stated that as part of the new policies to address inequality, the root of the crime crisis must be examined as one cannot hope to understand the roots of crime in Jamaica without understanding the deep social inequality and marginalization 
which has condemned many citizens to hopelessness. Still making news tonight, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. the Honorable Christopher Tofton says the ministry is ramping up vigilance and enforcement measures to ensure that persons who have returned from overseas do not breach the home quarantine guidelines. He noted that adherence is important to ensure that persons who may be infected with the virus will not spread it in their households and wider communities while they await their test results. The health minister says he has been receiving complaints that there are some Jamaicans who are breaching the orders and is urging them to obey the guidelines established by the government. He added that one person has been charged for disobeying the rules. As we continue with the news tonight, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett yesterday chaired the high-level 65th meeting of the United Nations World Tourism Organization's Commission for the Americas. Now, during the virtual session, Mr. Bartlett led a team of 22 member states from across the Americas in a high-level discussion to develop a strategy for the sustainable growth as some tourism industries across the globe prepare for the recovery period from the economic and social impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Bartlett further explained that the Jamaican government is confident that it has considered all relevant precautionary measures including the adaptation of necessary workplace protocols as well as tailored protocols for the tourism industry. In other news tonight, Prime Minister the Most Honorable Andrew Holness yesterday commissioned into service a new bridge in Bowden Hill, St. Andrew that will benefit hundreds of residents in the rural community and adjoining areas. The new structure replaces a nearly 70-year-old bridge that collapsed on February 18 in 2019. Prime Minister Holness, in his remarks, thanked the citizens of the community for being patient as the bridge was being constructed. The people of this community have been patient and they understand that we can't just snap our fingers and a bridge appears. The fact that it took us a year says a lot about the bureaucracy of our nation. It's not a particularly complex construction, it has some technicalities to it, but it could have been done in a much shorter period of time. And given the circumstances, whilst the parts for the bridge may have been in storage, Mr. Mayor, the money was not always in storage. In fact, some of that funds would have come from other efforts of the KCMC, including property sale. Now, Prime Minister Holness, in reassuring the Bowden Hill residents that the government has not forgotten them, also implored the residents to protect the new infrastructure. That every piece of infrastructure in the country is important and that we have to start to plan for the infrastructure. I'm here to tell you that this small community nestled in the cool hills here of Stony Hill with lovely, peaceful people that your government has not forgotten about you. So this piece of infrastructure here is a part of restoring the economy because when it was down, many businesses we're also down. And I want you to enjoy this infrastructure that you have. Take care of it. Member of Parliament for West Rural St. Andrew, where the community is located, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, said further development is taking place in the area as a road is being constructed in close proximity to the new bridge. And those were some of the stories making news. I'll return with other updates as 5,000 KN95 masks and 100 face shields were presented to the South Regional Health Organization from the Global Services Sector Association of Jamaica to help protect healthcare workers in the fight against COVID-19. And the Housing Agency of Jamaica broke ground for the Catherine Estate Housing Project that is to be developed in partnership with the China Harbor Engineering Company. We'll now take a break and then join Christopher Scott with sports. <laughs> 